For a case of palpitations, using our mnemonic old carts as our guide, we'd like to note the onset, or when do they start. For duration, it is unlikely to be having palpitations constantly the entire day, so we'd like to note the frequency. How long do they occur for, and how many episodes are you having, per day or per week? Also, we can note the progression. Do the palpitations appear to be occurring more frequently? To help us characterize, we could ask about any associated chest pain or lightheadedness. As we'll see, the decrease in blood flow caused by the palpitations can cause these symptoms, and also aggravating or alleviating factors. In all cases, we can add a CBC, serum electrolytes, chest x-ray, EKG, TSH, and T4. In cardiac arrhythmia, the palpitations will be of sudden onset and described as episodic. We can see chest pain or lightheadedness from the decrease in blood flow caused. We could also have a history of hypertension or MI. We'll order a Holter monitor. In hyperthyroidism, the supporting points will include palpitations, weight loss, heat intolerance, or diarrhea. In substance or caffeine-induced palpitations, we can see the palpitations with chest pain or lightheadedness and a history of drug use or caffeine. We'll add in a urine toxicology. In valvular heart disease, for example, mitral valve stenosis, we can see the palpitations along with chest pain or lightheadedness and a history of a childhood murmur or rheumatic fever. We'll order in an echocardiogram. In pheochromocytoma, we'll see palpitations, a headache, night sweats, and weight loss. We'll add urine catecholamines. In a hypoglycemic episode, we'll see palpitations, diaphoresis, and our patient will have a history of diabetes on insulin. We'll add in an A1C and serum glucose. And finally, in a psychiatric case of social phobia, general anxiety disorder, or a panic attack, we'll see the palpitations be situational. For example, in a social setting, we'll also see increased anxiety or worry and diaphoresis. We could add in a GAD7 questionnaire. Start with the cardio exam with some hand sanitizer. And the next thing we want to do is ask permission to examine. Um, so Dr. Ebay, do I have your permission? So for the cardio exam, if we're concerned about the thyroid or an arrhythmia or hyperthyroidism, we want to look at the thyroid. So the first thing we'll do is we could uh, visualize the thyroid and see if there's any visible lesions. And a good tip is to offer the patients a glass of water to see if it will help them swallowing. Would you like a glass of water to help no, them swallowing? Okay, thank you. okay, so the next thing we could do is then feel for the thyroid. So we ask them to take a swallow. Okay, and we don't feel any masses and we could do one on one side at a time. And then with the thyroid, we're going to introduce this mnemonic that we'll see again with the MSK exam, which is MSRP, and uh, Manufacturer Suggested Retail Price. And so this mnemonic will help guide you, along with the thyroid exam, the other components to look or to check for thyroid uh, issues. So we'll start with the M, which is motor. So ask the patient to please make a muscle, and we'll test his motor strength. So he has five out of five flexion and five out of five extension. No real need for sensation like a neuro exam for the thyroid, but we're used to this opportunity to let it hold as a placeholder for cyanosis and, and delayed cap refill. So we'll go ahead and look at his fingernails and you don't see any cyanosis. We could press on his fingers and we don't see any delayed cap refill. To look at his reflexes, so we're gonna look at his biceps reflex. We'll place our thumb on his biceps tendon and this uh, his normal reflex would produce a two plus response, okay? And if we were concerned for a case of B12 or hyperreflexia, he would have a three plus response. Okay, you would see that. Uh, now we could uh, assess his radial pulses as well. So we could do one at a time, two at a time if you're more comfortable, and we'll verbalize that it's a two plus pulse, regular rate and rhythm. After we completed the MSRP for his upper extremity, we can now move down to his lower extremity and we could do the same thing. His motor response on his lower extremity, so I'll go ahead and kick out for me. So he has a 5 out of 5, and then bend in, so a 5 out of 5. And now for sensation, for his lower extremity, we'd ask him to close your eye, please. Close your eyes, and do you feel this equally? Mm -hmm. We could instruct him to relax, and we'll do a patellar reflex. So a normal patellar reflex would be like 2 plus. And then if we were concerned like hyperreflexia or B12, uh, we would get a hyperreflexic response. So just relax, and you'd see something like this. And we can continue to demonstrate with the tap on his Achilles tendon. 
So we'd start right here, and we would we would get a normal reflex, and if this was a case of B12 and we were concerned about hyperreflexia, he would give us a dramatic uh, response. Okay, and you feel that. We're going to check his uh, posterior tibial pulse. So we'll, it will be behind the medial malleoli. And we can go ahead and do one at a time, or if you're a little more comfortable, you could do, do two at a time. Just comment that it's a two plus regular rate and rhythm. And now, once we're, we're finished down there, it's always a good idea to hand sanitize again. So and now we can move ahead to the cardiac exam. So for the cardio exam, a good way to do this is to degown the patient and just to help cover them up. You ask them to please hold it in this position so that it's protected and covered. First thing we want to do is vis visualize. So we'll make a comment that there's no cardiac visible lesions. I'm going to check the back and do the same thing as well. And now we're going to go ahead and palpate. So we're going to use a Z motion to just palpate and see if there's any pain. Did that produce any pain? Do the same thing on the back as well. Okay, good. And uh, now that we didn't feel any pain, we'll go ahead and listen to the heart sound. The mnemonic we want to use is apartment M225A. That stands for the aortic, so we'll check that aortic first in the second intercostal space on the right. And then we're going to go to the pulmonic side. Go to the tricuspid. And then we're going to go to the mitral. And if this was a female patient, a tip you could use is lift their breast up. Okay, you can make a comment that we heard regular uh, audible S1, S2, no murmurs, rubs, or gallops. While we have our patient sitting up here, we could transition nicely into the pulmonary exam. So for the pulmonary exam, since we already inspected, we won't have to do that again, and we could just check for symmetrical rise. So we could ask the patient to take a deep breath, please. Good, and that was equal. And please take another deep breath. And good, that was equal. And the next thing we'll go ahead and do is we'll do percussion. So we'll start above the clavicle. We'll percuss left to right in three spots. Do the same thing around the scapula on the back. Okay. After percussion, next thing we're going to do is go ahead and listen. And we'll start off listening. We'll switch it over to the bell. And we'll use that to listen above the clavicle. And the instructions you want to give is, when you feel my stethoscope, please breathe in and breathe out. So now we can make a comment that we heard clear breath sounds, uh, no audible wheezing. Once we completed the cardio and pulm exam, uh, lying, stand, uh, sitting up over here for economy of movement, we can now transition to the patient lying down. So we could ask them, would you, do you need help uh, lying down at all? Okay, so now we could just set the bed to 30 degrees for the uh, carotid exam. Ask them to go ahead and please lie down. Then you don't want to forget to extend the leg rest. Okay. Once we have them lying down, we can now cover up, cover them up again. And we'll start the carotid brewery exam. Um, if you could ask the patient to please look to your left. And we'll use, we're going to use now the bell of the stethoscope to first listen. OK, and you make a comment that there's no audible breweries. And while he's still on the side, you can now feel for the pulse. And you can comment that there's a 2 plus pulse, regular rate and rhythm. We'll do the same thing on the other side. So you could ask the patient to please turn, listen. comment that there's no audible breweries, and then feel for the pulse again, that it's a two plus pulse regular rate and rhythm. Okay, once we listen to the um, carotid uh, pulse, we could go ahead and make a comment that we don't see any visible JVD, so we could ask the patient to turn to the right again, okay, and then turn to the left, so there was no visible JVD. And then to finish up the cardio exam, we would just like to auscultate for the PMI. The best uh, position to do this in is to have the patient to lean over your left side, please. And just feel that it's not displaced at all and should be 
in the fifth intercostal space. So very important not to forget to auscultate for the PMI on the patient's left side and under the gown. If they were wearing a gown, we would go under the gown and we would just listen real quick.